Hello, and thank you for choosing my tutorials for your Blender 3D education. I'd like to start off with some self-promotion real quick. Please visit www.russimf.com. There you can find all of these tutorials and more. I have renders that I have done there and also weekly contests for the new best render featured on my main page. You can also find free textures you can use in modeling your own file under the Files tab. Please be sure to support the site by clicking on an ad while you're there. I'm doing this for free and I could really use the support. In and enjoy the tutorials. Hello and welcome to tutorial 16. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be going a little more in depth uh, on something I touched on earlier. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to make a little more photorealistic uh, FX in photos uh, that you've taken. Uh, still photos that is. So what we're going to do is uh, first I need you to head over to www.russ IMF.com. Uh, that's R U S S I M F dot com, and uh, go into the textures and render files. And uh, once this page loads, you go down to the very bottom down here, and uh, there's uh, one of the downloads I have on here is the photo for this tutorial. It's called Photo for Tutorial 16. Uh, you can just go ahead and view it, and then uh, right-click it and save as. Um, that way you can. Uh, see if I can find here. Uh, just go ahead and right click it and save the picture uh, so you can get it into the Blender program. Alright, uh, once you get it into the, uh, once you get it downloaded, go ahead and let's just adjust our scene real quick. Uh, go ahead and set our camera up so it's straight on the radials. Um, shouldn't take that long. All right, and you can go ahead and de uh, delete the default cube, that's fine. Uh, what I want to do is, after we get this camera, square it away. All right, that should be pretty close to for what we're doing. Uh, go ahead and add the background image, just like we did before in the previous, in the previous uh, tutorial. And there you go, there's our, there's our image. Uh, but as you see, it's, it's a little distorted. So uh, what I want to do is go into the render area, and I want to uh, try and adjust this, see which one works best here. Uh, I suppose that's going to have to be the best one right there. Uh, we can always increase the size, but I, I really don't like doing this all that much because it kind of jacks up what we're trying to do here. I don't like having odd sizes, but we'll try it anyways. Uh, we'll say 600 by 576, I guess that looks okay for uh, the demonstration. All right, and then uh, also we wanna come in here and uh, add the background image. And how we're gonna do that is go into the textures, add an image, uh, load the image, and mine is on my desktop. And like I said before, that's going to go ahead and put it in the background, okay? Uh, so let's make sure that that all gets through. Paper and horizon. Let's render the image real quick just to see. All right, there we go. Yeah, see, that's not bad uh, for what we're trying to do. That'll be fine. Okay, uh, now that we have the background image in there, you can go ahead and minimize that and put it off to the side. Uh, we're just going to put a simple object in it, uh, just something, you know, just so we can demonstrate this, okay? Uh, what I want you to put in there is a cube. All right, well, we have the cube in the image now, but that doesn't look very realistic at all. Not one bit. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to adjust it so it matches the environment, okay? So what we're gonna do is turn it slightly and then tip it backwards a little bit. So it, it could theoretically be sitting here on the on the counter. And one way that we can make this look even better is uh, go ahead and put a plane underneath it and uh, rotate the plane. Rotate the plane so it uh, it matches up with something in the environment like this. We have the counter right here, so we can just rotate it around until it matches right up with that. And bring the cube up to it. 
uh, and we can adjust this, but uh, for all intents and purposes, I just want to get this on here and make it look sufficient. Okay. Now that we have that on there, uh, we can adjust the cube to that. We can pull out here and uh, put the cube on that plane. And that should give us a better, something a little bit better to go off of. We'll see how that looks here in a moment. Yeah, see that's it's too uh, it's too angled, so we're just gonna go ahead and angle it back. But for what we're trying to do, this is gonna work perfect. Um, what I want you to do is take the take the plane and add an object, make it Z transparent, and go ahead and take it all the way down to just uh just nothing basically. And so you can't see it at all. That's that's basically what we're going for. And then I want you to find your light source and match it up with the TV because that's where the light is coming from in the in the scene. And we'll see if that has any effect here. And you can start to see some shading right there. Uh, let's increase this just to uh, like point. One zero, something very small. All right. What you'll see start happening is uh, we'll we'll get a shadow here, the shadow effect, and that's what we're going for is uh, to get a shadow off of the cube. What we can also do is add in a mirror effect, and that might uh, add a little bit to it also. Uh, one thing also I want to point out is that if you don't put a light source behind the object toward the camera, then it, you're going to get that dark image as well. So if you want to see the front, let's continue with what we're doing here. Just adjusting this so we can try and get a shadow off of the cube. One thing you can try is uh, turning it into a spot, turning the spot lamp toward the cube. That'll give it a bit more of a uh, punch. I think I see why we're not getting a reflection, though. Let's uh, go ahead and move the cube up here. Put it down on the plane. Uh, we're getting there. It's just a lot of trial and error, but with these techniques, you can really get it down, and it'll look really good. I have one example on uh, my webpage of how I did this with a three-dimensional character, and it actually turned out quite well. Uh, I suggest that you go check it out. You may uh, you may like that. I'm really just trying to get a shadow out of this right now. It's the main thing. There we go. And you can start to see how I'm shifting the light around and how it's affecting uh, the image on the ground on the floor here. Uh, now, as you notice, you can see the plane, even though it's completely at the queue. Uh, one way that you can fix this is to come in here and uh, just stretch the plane all the way back so it's off the camera. And uh, that way, it's going to be harder to see it. It's going to blend a lot more in. And uh, there's a few different things you can do to fix this. Subdivide it a couple times, and then pull those subdivisions out. Alright, I'm going to have to go ahead and break this into a two-part video, so uh, stay tuned for part two.